What's up everyone, welcome back to another What If video. For Dragon Ball Z movie characters, there are some characters that have some pretty cool backstories, and it would be pretty fun to see what it was like if they were in canon. I already did one with Turles, where his movie becomes canon and he actually turns good, so if you want to check out that What If, I'll link it at the top of this video. And Dragon Ball Super already included Broly, so I was thinking and seeing what other movie villains would fit in the story pretty well. Certain villains would probably fit well within canon, but they wouldn't change too much so it doesn't really make too much of an interesting topic for what if. But I did think of one that actually would completely change the world of Dragon Ball. And as you could probably tell by the title, I'm referring to Cooler. And I'm not talking about just making his movie canon, I mean just making Cooler an actual character in the universe. His movie kinda added him as an afterthought, but here we'll make him present as an actual character. One who's around for as long as Frieza was, as well as King Cold. Today, we'll be looking at what if Cooler was canon. For this video, I'm going to set a goal of 2500 likes. Be sure to click the like button so we can hit that goal, and once we hit it, I'll continue this what if with another part. Let's begin. We start far in the past, around the time when Frieza took over King Cold's army. This is where we'd start seeing some issues, and realistically, Cooler would definitely be involved here. With most pairs of siblings come sibling rivalry, but with Frieza and Cooler, it's not even rivalry, it's war. The two sons of King Cold have a power struggle competing to each be the favorite of their father in order to be the heirs of his throne. Frieza and Cooler are on the same side, but they don't particularly like each other. This isn't some normal sibling squabble. It's a contest to see who will get power over the universe. Ultimately, King Cold does make his decision. While Cooler may have just been trying to sound intimidating, he did mention before how he is harsher than his brother, and how Frieza is kinda soft. King Cold would definitely notice this. And while Frieza is a harsher ruler than him, Cooler is probably on a completely different level. Cooler may be stronger than his brother, but in terms of being a suitable fit for Emperor, Frieza becomes the heir to the throne. Understandably, Cooler doesn't like this decision one bit. Not wanting to be under command of his brother, or having to deal with his family anymore, Cooler decides to go off on his own. He'll become stronger than his brother and create his own empire, and take over the Frieza force one day. He essentially disowns his family and goes off on his own. He's just as power hungry as his brother, but he doesn't have any power handed to him like Frieza, and that just fuels the fire for his desire to conquer. His massive hate for the Frieza force keeps him going, and he begins building up his own power far away. In a completely opposite section of the galaxy, or probably even the universe, he'd be making his presence known away from the Frieza force. Alone, he is more than enough to take over some planets, and slowly, he starts growing a miniature squad of people that join him. He does find some stronger fighters. But not wanting a massive clan like the Frieza Force, he settles for a small group of people that he could trust, and who are all strong in their own right. Especially once he hears of the destruction of planet Vegeta, he knows that the Frieza Force is just a bunch of fodder soldiers. He won't need a massive army to take them down, just him and then a few other people. This leads to the creation of Cooler's Armored Squadron, a group of three fighters that follow Cooler's every orders. They're strong and loyal, exactly what Cooler was looking for. In his own outskirts of the galaxy, he continues his own conquest of terror. He does gain a little bit of influence and he is feared, but he still doesn't have the power of the Frieza Force. That is partially because he wants to lay low and wait for a time to strike them and then take over. He plans on somehow defeating his brother and usurping the throne, which will give him rule over the entire galaxy. Alongside his squad, and with some former inside information, he does spy on his brother's army, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Decades have passed since that last interaction with them. The year is age 762. Cooler is keeping tabs on his brother, and then he finds out something that might be the perfect opportunity for him. Somehow, there were some Saiyan survivors, one of them being Vegeta, the prince. From what he could tell, there was some other Saiyan on this planet called Earth, which Vegeta and his squad tried to come and take with them. But Cooler doesn't care about the specifics of that. The things he heard about Vegeta are more interesting, something that Frieza actually caught wind of. Apparently, there's this thing called Dragon Balls on Namek, something that was rumored to exist but no one actually knew for sure. On Earth, these things do exist because there are Namekians there for some reason, so that most likely means that planet Namek has Dragon Balls as well. It appears Frieza is heading there as well, after hearing this news from Vegeta when spying on him. It will take quite a bit of time to arrive on Namek, but Cooler and his squad decide to head out. Not only is this the perfect opportunity to face his brother, but he can also get these Dragon Balls and get some wish granted for him. They make preparations and head out. They are going to arrive a little bit later than everyone else though. In the meantime, let's actually switch over to Namek. As of now, things are going pretty normal. The Frieza Force has arrived in Namek, as well as Vegeta, and of course, the group of Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin. They all have the same goal, gather Namek's Dragon Balls and make their wish. Since Cooler is so far away, it does take some time for him to arrive on Namek. So we're actually going to fast forward a bit. 
a couple days actually. Let's say around the time that Piccolo fuses with Nail. Piccolo is in the midst of his fight with Frieza, and in the meantime, Goku is currently being healed in the healing chamber. It's amazing how strong Piccolo's gotten with this Namekian fusion, but is it actually enough to take on Frieza? Apparently not. Frieza does have other forms above his current one, and Frieza decides, why not show off his final form? He's surprised that these guys were able to draw it out of him, but he might as well give them a show before they all die. Frieza begins mutating into his final form. Seeing how horrific his third form is, they can't imagine how gross he'll look in his final form. His transformation finishes, and he reveals his ultimate transformation. He's actually a lot shorter than normal, he doesn't look like anyone expected. His battle begins with the Dragon Team, but in the middle of the fight, the Dragon Team and Vegeta all sense something. It's not Goku, it's someone else that they haven't sensed before, and the key they sense feels pretty terrifying. They stop in the middle of the fight and Freeze is kinda confused, until he looks up in the sky and sees a ship arriving. Followed by that, a few smaller ships. These aren't people from Earth, and these definitely aren't people from the Frieza Force, but Frieza is able to recognize one of the ships. He remembers from long ago. Without a doubt, that's his brother Cooler. Frieza is pretty surprised that he didn't think of this sooner. Of course Cooler has been spying on him, and this would be the perfect opportunity to strike. While he wasn't concerned about the Dragon Team, he's concerned now about his brother. This could meddle in his plans a bit, but Frieza actually isn't too worried. He gives a sigh of annoyance, but still feels like he can actually kill his brother, and he doesn't mind doing that. That would actually be the preferable option. He tells the Dragon Team that he'll deal with them later, as now, he has to go and face his brother. This comes as a shock to everyone, finding out that Frieza has a brother that seems about as powerful as Frieza himself. Vegeta's honestly pretty shocked too. He's heard rumors about Cooler, but didn't know it was actually true. And from what he knows in rumors, Cooler was actually stronger than Frieza, and he wasn't chosen as leader because of how harsh he was. After seeing how strong Frieza is already, and knowing that Cooler might even be above him, Vegeta's lost all hope. This may get really messy. Cooler's ship lands, and his squad actually goes out to seek out other power levels, and they find the Dragon Team. They'll take care of these pests, and make sure no one gets in the way, while Cooler takes on Frieza. Frieza flies over to where his brother is, and sees him standing there. Cooler is elated. Now is his opportunity. They start out with formalities, hiding the disgust they have for each other. Frieza plays dumb and wants to know why his brother's here. Cooler doesn't hide anything. He's here to take the Dragon Balls from his brother, as well as defeat him. Frieza has some unfortunate news for his brother. The Dragon Balls have already become useless, with a wish already being stolen from him. Cooler wasn't expecting this, but no matter. From what he could tell, the Frieza Force has been completely eradicated on this planet, including people like Zarbon, Dodoria, and the entire Ginyu Force. Besides those smaller power levels that they scouted out before, Frieza's the only obstacle here. No matter. Even without the Dragon Balls, he could still defeat its brother like he wanted. He's exceptionally angry now too about the fact that there's no Dragon Balls, so this is perfect. He has someone to take his anger out on. It's surprising to him to see that his brother's actually out of his suppression. Were those other power levels able to actually draw out his final form? His brother must be really weak if he needed that to defeat those guys. Because otherwise, from most of the times that he's seen Frieza, he always stayed in his first form. His brother is pathetic. The two of them slowly rise into the air, preparing to fight. Frieza and Cooler begin their duel, and it can be sensed all the way across the planet from the Dragon Team. Let's actually get back to the Dragon Team right now, because while this fight's going on, they eventually meet Cooler's armored squadron. We don't have much in terms of information about them, but Weekly Shonen Jump actually showed us that their power was above the Ginyu Force. But their power actually isn't an issue. Gohan and Krillin would probably have trouble taking them on, and we don't really know Piccolo's power level, but considering how strong he was against Frieza, he'd be more than enough to take on these guys, as well as Vegeta who's about 250,000 in terms of his power level at this point. The battle doesn't take too long as Piccolo and Vegeta work together to take them out, but out of nowhere, they sense another signature of Ki. Oh wait, this time it's good. It's Goku. Goku flies over to where they are, wanting to meet up with them first. He could tell they're not with Frieza right now, and from what he can tell, there's another giant power that Frieza's facing right now. Goku meets up with everyone, and here's the news. Apparently, Frieza's brother has arrived on Namek, and just from sensing the power alone, he can tell that this guy named Cooler is actually stronger than Frieza. He also gets confirmation from Vegeta about this. They wonder, why is this guy here? Will he actually be able to defeat Frieza for them? One thing that they do know is, he's not on their side. He sent his armored squadron here and they killed them, so that's not really good news. For now, they'll just have to wait and see how this turns out. Goku felt confident that he might be able to fight Frieza, but this guy, he doesn't know about. It seems his power is way higher than he could ever expect. Back to the battle, things aren't going too well for Frieza. His brother is a great match for him in terms of power, and it's been a while since Frieza actually had a good fight. Frieza's even at 100% right now. 
He feels like if he's able to draw this fight out long enough and outsmart his brother, he might actually be able to win. But oh no, it's not gonna go that well for Frieza. Cooler questions his brother. Is this truly his full power, his actual final form? Frieza confirms this. This is his maximum output. And he commends his brother for getting him to go this far in terms of power. This makes Cooler pretty happy. He gives his brother one last tidbit of info. He holds out a single finger. One. Frieza's confused. Cooler informs his brother. He has one more form above this. He's still suppressed. Frieza is terrified. There's no way. His brother has to be bluffing. He's in his final form now, isn't he? He tries to brush it off, acting like he's not bothered by it, thinking it's some kind of sick joke. There's no way his brother has gotten a form above his final one. He definitely has to be at his full power right now. Cooler smirks. He yells out to his brother. You should feel honored. You're the first, and soon to be the last, to witness my ultimate transformation! He proceeds to grow larger, growing spikes on his body. It's a grotesque transformation, one that not only has a terrifying power, but looks terrifying as well. The transformation completes. A mask goes up on Cooler's mouth, distorting his voice. Frieza is paralyzed with fear. Cooler rushes his younger brother, and gives him one powerful gut punch, followed by him elbowing Frieza into the ground. Before Frieza could even get back on his feet, his brother is there again. Finally, he got what he wants. He's going to finally kill Frieza. He wants to savor this moment. He draws his arm back and then lunges it forward into Frieza's chest, piercing right through him. He falls to his knees, dying. It seems now, Cooler is the leader of whatever remains of Frieza's army. Next, he has to take on King Cold. He watches as Frieza dies, happy to see that he's finally accomplished what he wanted his whole life. Cooler has taken the throne and now has power. Now, he has to find his armored squadron and they'll get out of here. They have no other use for this planet. That's odd. It seems like he can't sense them. Even going through communications on his ship, he can't get to their scouters. There's no way. Did those small power levels actually kill his squadron? No, there has to be some other explanation. He goes out to their last known location, flying across the planet, surveying it. Goku and his group are utterly speechless. They could tell what happened. Frieza went to his full power which is way higher than anyone expected, and Cooler was still able to kill him. How are they supposed to take this guy down? Moreover, what about the Dragon Balls? Cooler is rushing towards their location, and they need to think of a plan quickly. Hide or face him? What are they supposed to do? There's no way they could take this guy out, is there? Vegeta's even warning against it. They need to retreat right now and hide from this guy. Time's ticking, and this is where we'll leave off for now. What will Cooler do once he arrives? Will the group hide, retreat, or try and face him? Do they stand any chance of getting the Dragon Balls or even defeating Cooler? Let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out and see what you guys think. As always, if you liked this video, be sure to drop a like, and let's try to hit our goal of 2,500 likes. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about future parts of this what if, and any other videos that I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.